What's going on guys? Welcome back to your Lake Fork. Guys, as you can see behind me, Lake Fork is super low and dangerous to navigate at times right now. So today, we're going to teach you guys how to navigate Lake Fork even in low water conditions. So at the Currier State Lake Fork is right at six foot low, a little bit less than six foot low, but actually the current lake bed or the normal full pool lake bed is actually up past me to this side. So you can see how much of our lake horizontally is out of the water. Now, as you look at this and think about water being up to my knees or whatever where I'm standing right now, you could actually drive your boat on plane when the lake's full pool from here to there. But you couldn't do it from here to there. You guys can see some of the patchy trees out in the water. Even if you turn around and look behind us right now, you guys will be able to see all those patches of trees and all those lanes. Like if you ran down this bank between these two trees into the this cove, you'd be fine. But if you ran out in the middle of the cove, obviously that would be an issue. So with the lake being low, it provided an opportunity for us to learn how to navigate the lake. Even myself who fishes here every day for the last five to seven years, uh, I've learned more about navigating the lake through this process. And what I've done is taken multiple days many 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 days guys i've spent so much time out here on this lake idling into every corner of this great bass fishery and i've marked lanes and trails and what i've done is marked the lanes and trails and along with that put hazard waypoints whenever you get underwater obstructions such as the standing timber in this lake they get close to our lanes that we've marked now we believe we've made the very best navigation tool for lake fork that's ever been made what i can tell you is this you will have more lanes on this boat lanes chip than you'll find anywhere else. We're calling this the Your Lake Fort Guide Pro Lanes, by the way. You'll have more information, more lanes, more hazard waypoints. You're just going to get more information. Let me take you guys into the boat, show you the graph, and kind of show you some of the work that we've done building the Your Lake Fort Guide Pro Lanes. All right, guys, so right now I'm going to go ahead and talk you through some of the finer points of how we built the Your Lake Fork Guide Pro Lanes and also how you guys can utilize them to navigate Lake Fork just like a pro. The first thing you need to know is that we have two sets of lanes, and they're good at different depth ranges. Hey, you're going to see white lanes that are going to load into your Lorentz Graft as well as red lanes. The white lanes are going to be good right now. They're good all the way down to six foot low. You can run those. Rest assured that there aren't any obstacles on those lines at six foot low. Once the lake rises to three foot low or all the way up to full pull, you'll be able to run all of our lanes that we're giving you throughout Lake Fork. And I really can't explain to you guys how extensive that extends into Lake Fork. It's basically a lane into almost every corner of Lake Fork. If there's a way to get in there, we've pretty much marked it. Spent an extraordinary amount of time idling this lake. Let you know which lanes you can run when the lake is six foot low, which lanes you can run when the lake is three foot low and higher. Now another thing as we were building these lanes, I did not want to mark any lanes uh, off my old trails. I wanted to make all these brand new. I wanted to confirm them at low water levels. One of the issues with that is there's certain areas of the lake, as you'll see on the shots that I'm showing you, that we just can't get a boat into. There's no water in it. Now I know the lane going up there. I've ran it for years when the lake's full pull. But what we're going to do for all you guys that purchase it right now, we have lanes that don't extend as far as they could once we get back to full pull. Once the lake rises, we will then extend those lanes and we'll send you guys a free extension chip to add on to your current Your Lake Fort Guide Pro Lanes for absolutely free. One thing I do want to warn you guys about, we wanted to give you guys all the options to navigate this lake at your own risk, right? So there are some lanes that I may run or other experienced boaters on Lake Fork may run that you may not be ready to run. It may be a chance you don't want to take. Now, we didn't want to exclude you and not give you these lanes. So what we did was we marked our hazard waypoints on these lanes. So anywhere that the hazards start getting narrow to the lanes, I would strongly advise you to idle those lanes the first several times through there. If you don't feel completely 100% comfortable that you can keep your boat directly on our line at all times as those hazard points narrow in, you're going to want to idle those lanes several times until you get used to it and are comfortable navigating that line. So as I was marking these lanes and marking the hazard waypoints on the narrow lanes, it's important for you guys to know that I did mark the hazard waypoints on the lane side. Now what I mean by that is if I marked a lane through the timber where we had the gap, where the, you had the safe navigation route going through the timber, right? And then I went back and marked these trees that were close to the lane, and I was on the lane side of that timber. So I would mark a lane, and then I would turn around and idle down this side and mark every tree. 
and then I would idle down this side and mark every tree. But if the tree was here and the lane was here, my boat was always on the lane side marking those hazard waypoints. So the center of that dot that is a hazard waypoint is where I drop the waypoint. The actual hazard is just a few feet on the other side of that, even further away from the lane. So I did that so that those hazard waypoints would give you just ever so slight grace so that you would know as long as your boat is anywhere on the inside half of that hazard waypoint, you're going to be safe. Guys, we took an immense amount of time constructing these Year Lake 4 Guide Pro Lanes. Like we said earlier in the video, don't mean to beat it over your head, but that's the reality. We took a ton of time. We idled into every corner of this lake, and I strongly feel like we've made the most precise, the most detailed, and definitely the most informative version of boat lanes for Lake Fork that you'll find anywhere on the market today. One other thing that we did with our boat lanes, we give you guys, for the ranch, you have options. Now, we're still trying to figure out the Hummingbird and Garmin conversion. That's an issue. I'll explain to you guys a little bit why. Hummingbird and Garmin only allow 50 trails. So we're having to figure out how to convert all of my individual trails into one or two trails. Right now, when you load this into your Lawrence, you're actually gonna receive over 400 trails. It's 200 and something uh, three foot trails and 200 and something six foot trails. I actually like it being like that and I wanna keep it like that for you guys. I want you to have the option if you don't like a trail, let's say that you're, you're going into an area and you're idling it the first time and it's just too narrow for your comfort. You never want to run that trail. You can actually delete that one trail and still keep all the others. You can change the color of that trail if you want to be more cautious on that. Like, just give yourself a note basically by changing the color to, hey, slow down on this trail. This one's a little tighter than I'm comfortable with. You can change the color of the trail. You can basically customize your trails to fit your needs and desires however you want to by doing them as individual trails the way we've done. So it's a very customizable, very detailed, and very precise navigation tool for Lake Fork. So go to yourlakeforkguide.com, order them up there, they'll be shipped right to your door, or go ahead and stop by Lake Fork Marina. You can buy them in the tackle store there at Lake Fork Marina as well. And uh, go get yourself some Your Lake Fork Guide Pro Lanes and start navigating Lake Fork just like a pro. Hey, All right guys, it's time for some Lake Fork bass fishing reports as well as reports from other lakes in the area. We're gonna start doing these every two weeks. Now, this was supposed to go out to you guys over the weekend. I'm sorry, I had a crazy weekend with stuff off the water. I sincerely apologize for not getting it out on the time. It's aired on Wednesday. These reports were active as of last Friday, so still fairly current information. Hopefully it'll help you guys going forward this week. Got these reports from the other guides on Friday, and it was from the previous two weeks. Uh, big shout out, big thank you to the guides that help us with these reports. Man, this is one of the only places where you can come and get reports from multiple full-time guides every couple weeks, get fresh, current, detailed, exact information, uh, not outdated, not reports that are a month or two old, or guys are waiting until they're about to phase to give you the report on a website somewhere. This is real-time, real stuff. So we're pretty proud of these reports we're doing, and we certainly hope it helps each, each of you catch one bigger fish. Uh, that's what we've always been about here. You guys know that. By the way, if you want to book a trip with myself or any of the great guides that we use here at Your Lake Fort Guide, be sure to visit us at yourlakefortguide.com. We'll get you set up on a trip with any of these guys that you would like, uh, as well as several other guides that we work with at Lake Fork and the area lakes as well. All right, first up, let's read our report from David Ozio. David says, big changes on Fork over the past two weeks. I have many locations where the bass have moved up and positioned on wood for easy pickings. Strange thing about this pattern is that it only works in the afternoon. We have leaned on the shaky head with a VM chopstick in Texas smoke and a drop shot using a Zoom Red Bug, Red Bug Shad trick worm and Morning Dawn Robo Worm, so red colored straight tail worms on the drop shot. Mornings are focused on the shad spawn, plenty of birds on points feeding on the shad. We picked the six and two fours day before yesterday morning on an underspin with a white trash reaction innovation skinny dipper. That's just a white. Uh, with a little glitter uh, swim bait for those of you that are wondering what that is. I usually opt not to deal with the shad spawn boat traffic so we start later in the morning on occasions and focus on wood. Hey, I completely understand that because I'm starting to do the same thing. I'm going a little different route today but I'm starting to look more offshore. Um, but the shad spawn boat traffic, now that the shad spawn is starting to dwindle down, it's happening in less places, the shad spawn boat traffic is getting heavy. So. Be prepared if you want to target that shad spawn bite early in the morning, you're going to deal with boats on some of the places you want to fish for sure. Then David adds, for the novice clients, we usually head over to Lake Welsh and target the east to catch green fish. The east bank, I'm, I'm thinking he means there, the eastern side of the lake to catch green fish. Run the grass lines with a Reaction Innovation Skinny Dipper in California 420 behind a 316 tungsten 
On sunny days on that pond, I resort to a Texas rig worm in watermelon red on the outside of the grass lines. It's no more complicated than that. So uh, California 420 is very similar to watermelon red. It's a green and black base bait with a red flake. He's throwing a swim bait in watermelon red or California 420 on the cloudy days, windy days. Then when it gets sunny and calm, he's getting outside the grass line fishing the outside edge with a Texas rig worm in watermelon red as well. All right, let's read up on how Vic Pearsall is doing. Now, Vic Pearsall is actually part-time right now. He's just started guiding uh, this year, so he is doing it part-time right now. He still has another job as well. Uh, but Vic has had like 30 years of experience fishing Lake Fork and all these lakes in the area. Looks like Vic, we've had a lot of wind still. We're still having a lot of windy days, so a lot of our guys, including myself at times, are spending a lot of days on smaller lakes to be able to get out and fish with our customers while it's windy. Vic says, catching plenty of fish on smaller lakes in the area, fishing white chatter baits with matching paddle tail swim bait, wacky worms, and topwater poppers, fishing shallow one to six foot. Some deeper fish have been caught on Carolina rig with either a bubble fry or six inch ridge worm. Colors are plum, fat, plum fleck, which is like blue fleck, very similar, Texas smoke, and watermelon magic red. So again, watermelon red popping up again. Watermelon red is a common theme here. Next, we'll step over to Cord Huggins. Cord Huggins says he's still catching fish up shallow in five foot or less of water. Now, I know Cord's been fishing Lake Fork mostly. I think maybe only Lake Fork. Uh, catching fish up shallow in five foot or less of water in the pockets, throwing white chatterbaits, spinnerbaits, buzzbaits, and a wake bait occasionally. Fish are tr starting to transition back out the points and chasing shad. I'm targeting those fish with a five inch smash tech line through in white or a natural shad color. Carolina rigs and shaky heads are also producing bites. Have also been fishing smaller lakes in the area. Here we go. So I guess he has been fishing some of the lakes. While the bed fishing is starting to fade, I've been catching all my fish on the grass flats adjacent to spawning pockets, throwing a weightless fluke in Cinco, as well as a smash tech line through also. And for our last report this week, we'll go to Cody Mays. Cody says on smaller lakes in the East Texas region, throw top water early on grass lines or wind blown points. The shad spawn is present. After top water has died down the way wacky worm, chatterbait, or square bill. On Lake Fork, some bed fish are still present and can be caught running the banks with a chatterbait or square bill. We are currently fishing wind blow points with a Carolina rig with a six cents flush in watermelon red. Cody's dipping his tail in chartreuse on those watermelon red six cents flush. That's a fluke style bait from six cents fishing. You can also catch them on crankbait or swim baits on wind blown points. In the morning or on overcast days, I'm throwing a yellow magic popper or six cents catwalks in shallow stumps and picking off good quality fish. Well, there you go. There's a multiple lake from Cody Mays as well. That's going to do it for our reports, man. The fishing has been good. It's been really good, guys. And to back that up, I will kind of flip through some pictures for you guys now. Let y'all see some of these fish our guides have been catching with their customers. Hopefully we can see these and the cameras will focus in. There's an absolute giant right there. There's another big one. Another, I mean, all these fish are going to be good fish. We don't really post too many fish. Pictures. That's my boy Ty from the video. I had to, had to slide my buddy Ty in there and give him a little love. As you guys can see, our guides have been putting their people on some really quality fish this, this last couple weeks. Hopefully the camera isn't blurring this and you guys are getting this. It's my first time trying it like this. We'll see how it works out. It just keeps on and going. And the hits keep on coming, as they say. Look at old Vic Double. Look at Vic Double Fisting. That's Vic Pearsall, y'all. All right, that's the end of our picture list there, but... Like I said, just over the last couple weeks in our guide's boat, besides that one of my, my boy Ty, my youngest son, or my oldest son Ty that you guys saw the video of last week. Man, hopefully this will help you guys. We're going to continue to do this. I will do my very best to get this out on time. It'll be not this coming Saturday, Saturday, but a week from Saturday. We'll have that out this Saturday. You guys will have video from our seminar. That is this Friday. If you're in the Lake Fork area, please do come hang out with us. You can ask us questions live in person. We would love to meet you in person. Just come hang out with us. We're going to talk fishing, break down some type of current topic that's going on with Lake Fork, uh, and break it down in great detail and try to give you guys all of the tips, keeping no secrets left behind, and uh, try to help you guys catch more and bigger fish because, as we said before, that's what we're all about. Here at your Lake Fork guy, loving our fellow man and helping each other catch more and bigger fish. Thank you guys sincerely for everything you do. Go get a boat lights car. 
I hope that'll help you guys stay safe and learn how to navigate the lake more efficiently. Hopefully that'll lead to more fish catches as well. And uh, we'll just keep doing what we do, man. You guys keep doing what y'all do. Y'all are unbelievable. It's, uh, it's an amazing and honoring experience that I get to take part in every day. Thanks to all of you guys. I don't have the biggest audience. I never will because that's not what I want. I firmly believe that I do have the best. And that's because of every one of y'all. So thank you very much. We'll see you next time right here on Your Lake Fort Guide.